we've now talked a little bit about the intuition behind principal component analysis. And now it's time to do a little bit of code. First off, we're going to try just a simple 2D feature problem. Right, this is the uh, PCA simple skeleton that I've put together, a standard set of imports and figure parameters. And, and first off, what we're going to do is actually build the data set. So I thought it would be interesting for you to see uh, a process for, for doing, for generating random data sets. So first thing we're going to do is uh, sample from uh, a uniform distribution. This will be one of our features. Okay, so uh, random, we've imported the random package up here. Uh, so the random uh, function within this package uh, generates a uniform distribution between zero and one. And all that we're doing uh, in this list comprehension line is that uh, we're iterating over, uh, over uh, a set of 1,000 values. And for each iteration, we're rolling a random die. Okay, so there's there's x0, and now what I'm going to do is create an x1 that is correlated with x0, so it's going to be a function of x0, but it, it in and of itself is also going to have some randomness. So, so just with this, uh, so what we're doing here is we're iterating over all of the elements of x0, and uh, this is the value that's, that's being substituted or being included in this new list. Uh, so, so here, if we just left it as is, uh, what x1 would be is perfectly correlated with x0. It would, be, uh, it would be exactly half of x0. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and add an extra bit to, to have some independent noise in here. Oops, fingers were not aligned there. Okay, so this this uh, new call to random, we're sampling from a Gaussian distribution with mean zero and standard deviation of 0 0.05. So, so x1 is going to be correlated with x0, but then there's going to be uh, a piece of it where, where it's anti-correlated. And now uh, these are still Python lists, so we're going to convert those into proper NumPy arrays. And in doing it this way, we're ending up with a two-dimensional NumPy array. And then finally, we'll create our feature vector. Where we're up appending the x zeros and x ones together. And finally, I'm going to take the transpose of that. All right, just for fun, let's also print out the shape of the resulting x. All right, so we have a thousand rows and two columns. So the two columns correspond to our x0 and x1 that we've created. All right, next up, let's actually look at the data. And I'm just going to plot uh, x1 as a function of x0. So here we're selecting of x, we're selecting all rows, but the but column one here, all rows in column two. And we're making this just a simple scatter plot. This axis equals line, what it does is it says that uh, the units along the horizontal and vertical axis should visually be the same, uh, the same length. And, and if, if you're, in general, if you're plotting 
uh, two variables, one against another, that have the same units, you really should be using axis equals unless you have a, a good reason not to. Uh, so if I had uh, meters on one and meters on the other, if uh, one of those axes were compressed, it, would, it could potentially give you a false sense of what the real relationships are between the two variables. Okay, so there's our data set. All right, and you can, you can see that uh, along x0, I guess, let's go ahead and add in our, our labels here, just so it's clear. And we'll do the same for the horizontal. Okay, there, there we go. So as you can see, x0, uh, the range of that is zero to one. And x1, remember, we were multiplying x0 by a half plus adding some noise. And, and the center of this blob here, that is, has a slope of uh, 0.5. So we're going from the origin, 0, 0, up to uh, about 0.5 here uh, in the vertical. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is actually create a PCA model for this uh, data set. And we've explicitly constructed it such that x0 and x1 uh, are correlated with one another. And in particular, the, the main uh, axis of uh, variance in this data set is, is right along this uh, dimension here. It's not along x0, it's not along x1, it's, it's along the diagonal here. And what PCA will do is it will actually find this uh, location for us, or find this uh, main axis of variance. So let's create a PCA object. And we're starting with just two components here. So it's not terribly interesting to, to ask for more, for more than two minus one components. So we're going to focus here on just the one uh, axis of variance. Of course, there is variance uh, along this axis here, the one that's orthogonal to, to the main axis of variance. Fit that, fit the data set. And and once we fit the data set, what I'm doing is just uh, uh, doing a transformation from this two-dimensional space down into the one-dimensional space. And then finally, we can go in the opposite direction. We can go from that one dimensional space back up to the two dimensional space with the inverse transform. All right, the reduced uh, PCA is, this is the uh, space that we've projected into. So it has a dimensionality. We have a thousand samples and all of the samples are described using a single feature. But once we bring it back into the original space, uh, we're a thousand samples by uh, two features. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is look at where these points actually ended up. Let's start with the, the plotting code that we had before and add one, one other uh, set of points, which is our transform points, the XPCA points. Oops, XPCA. And we're going to plot these in red so that they're different than the blue points. Okay, so, so there we go. So all of the points here uh, in blue, as we've gone to, from two dimensions to one dimension and then back, they're all projected onto this, onto this line. So, so this point up here, uh, it's orthogonally projected down to the line. So that's the corresponding point right there. Uh, these, this pair of points here are the next two uh, in, in this line. And at that point, so they start to merge together there. Likewise, over on the, the far end here, this point here is uh, projected onto this point. 
and uh, this point here is projected the point right next to it. Okay, so, so as we've gone through this transformation, there is a loss of information in the sense that we've lost the variance along, uh, along this dimension here, but we've captured a vast majority uh, of the variance. We'll see in the next video that we can actually measure the, the amount of variance that we have cut out in this uh, transformation process. Um, here, we've, we've probably captured, what, 85, 90% of the total variance in, in the system here. N now, if uh, the x0 and x1 actually were correlated with, with one another, uh, plus having this extra bit of noise, then in some sense, we sort of stripped out that, that noise uh, b within that relationship. And so for some data sets, that this is exactly the, the uh, kind of thing that we want to do. We want, want to simplify our representation of uh, the individual samples in our data set. And along the way, if we're losing information, that information really should be about extraneous uh, information, the noise that's, that's in the system. So we'll, we'll look at this in, in more detail once we have a few more dimensions to work with.